Give thanks. It's Elohi, Hetepu El Bay, aka Blackwater the Meta Magician. Um gonna go over some more of that uh Wasata Semitwai. Um basically tonight, well today we're going to uh break down the forming of uh, the Mecca Ball with intent, mudra, mantra, and uh, mandala. Um, the title is Kaper Merkaba. Kaper meaning creating or forming, so to form the Merkaba. The intent is of course mind over matter or intent over force, so just let go, basically, just let go of whatever, you know what I'm saying, whatever's on the mind and the heart. Don't let the, don't let the material substance of the form, it's just one basic movement though, don't let that um, overtake the actual, the actualization of what's already there. So basically what I mean is don't try to materialize something, don't don't try to feel what you think you should feel. Feel what you think, feel what you know is already there. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to force the situation. Just empty the mind, empty the thoughts, and allow what is going to happen to happen without putting a lot of material force or effort towards it. Allow yourself, your true self, the indwelling intelligence to come from inside flow outward. Alright, so forming the Merkel ball with the tent and then also with Mudra. The Mudra is basically the Mystic Pyramid, okay? The Mystic Pyramid will be held in the, right at the, the um, thumbs will be at the nose and the arms will be spread out, rounded, not locked out like that around it. The two index fingers will meet in the joint, the thumbs will meet in the joint, the other fingers will be loose, very loose, you know, like ping pongs or marbles, actually like marbles are in between the fingertips, they're not going to be closed off, they're going to be loose and open so the energy can flow through their property without blocking it. Thumbs touching, okay. Or not touching, but you can touch. And you're going to focus your mind's eye from here, the mid the eyebrow, and the mid brow, the eyes, and the, and the, um, and the uh, sasha, sashamana, the sasahara, sushamana is the central canal, Sas, sasahara is the thousand lotus petal. So we're going to focus our mind's eye right in the center of the pyramid. As we breathe in, from our right palm, six seconds, allow it to circulate through the rounded elbow on the right arm. When it gets here to the solar plexus, we the thymus gland. Hold for three, then exhale out the left arm and allow it to go out the left palm. So you are breathing in, and this is, the, this is the posture from the front view, so it's the mudra. And your intent is to be focused within without having the random thoughts. When they come, they're fleeting, remember, they're temporary, they're not permanent. It's false evidence appearing real. Relocate that with two positive higher vibrations. Even if you think the thought is positive, just try to have no thought and just be in your void, be in Buchi, in Noon, Amenti, nothing. Ten. Remember the now. The time is now. Now time. So it's zero time. Okay. So the thumbs are going to be at the nose. They're going to be spread out. And that's the mudra. Um. The mantra is um. So when we come in. Not go over it, but the mantra is on. Um. The mandala is the symbol that I will place. I will place that on 
that we've we looked at it, we've went over it before, but the mandala is the alchemical symbol that this is based on, actually is all interconnected. It, it flows together. It's not really that's the, the foundation of this because if the alchemical symbol of mandala will be a circle encased in within the circle will be the pyramid or the triangle and in case within the triangle will be a square and then in case within the square will be another smaller circle so the smaller circle is the initial you that's the the black dot basically that's the um, initiatory, initiatory spark that's that ember that flowed off so that first circle then we have the square so that circle and the square. The square is the four corners, it's the four modalities of the physical reality, fire, air, water, and earth, that the north, east, west, south, however we want to look at it, but those four directions coming together and forming around the circle, which is your initi initiatory spark. So that's the physical body, the square. The pyramid is the knower, the thinker, and the doer. The pyramid represents the fire aspect of the activity of the Kundalini coming in junction or dark matter coming in junction with dark energy. Dark energy is the universal expansion as it flows down to the condensed version of itself. This is your the circle is basically your universe within the multiverse. That's your own little personal universe. Then that knower thinker doer is the comp it's the completion of the contemplation of your conception, if you will. So when you conceive, which is basically that's the knower, your higher self or your true self, your true nature, your indwelling intelligence, when you have conceived it and you see it, then the knower then trickles down to the thinker and it gives it the information that's proper for the doer to actualize it into the physical square. Okay, so the knower, knowing its true self and its true nature from the primordial essence, which would be the, the expansion of the dark energy. The dark energy is the acceleration of the unity. It expands the universe, dark energy. That's basically what is known to man as far as mind is concerned, how to conceive what dark energy is doing. It's doing a lot of things. There's no reason to really go into it. But, okay, so this dark energy is... Uh, moving around, expanding into the knower, thinker, and doer. So now the knower knows itself, and the do, and now it has given it has given thought or transcribed information to the thinker. The thinker now transduces that information to where it is comprehensible by the doer. The doer comprehends it within the square. Then it it, relocal, it relocalizes that information into the black dot. The black dot being our initiatory spark or the initiatory spark that we are interconnected to. It's a wormhole. It's basically a vortex. Basically, this is the water vortex shooting off into other vortexes. Uh, so be it um, going into the, the mandala of the um, circle. Then... The um, triangle, no think or do it. Then the square, fire, air, water, earth. Then the circle within the square, the bendu dot. Coming down into the soft spot and embedding itself within the pineal gland or sitting, or asir sitting on the throne of aset. The sacred marriage, hydrogen skimbios. Alright, so within that, that's the mandala. Within that, that is how, this is the, the uh, mudra again. The mantra is Om. Um, and the mandala is the symbol that, um, you can have that as your uh, focal point within the entirety. As you see the dot within there, notice that the physical body is the square. So you have your triangle here, the dot. The initiatory spark will be there that, that you're going to focus on from here. The square 
physical body. You know what I'm saying? So you got the square. That's uh right here. Then you got the the dot in between. Then you have the water circle of the universe or your multi being interconnected with the multiverses of your own personal one song, the universe. In person, again it means through sound. So the um the mantra is um so when we go into it, I'm gonna step back some so we can see I, well, you can see my feet as well, and my and how it's gonna be shoulder width apart. It's just like standing qigong. This is standing qigong, basically. That's what it is. I'm gonna also we're gonna go over two aspects, but it's only it's, it's two uh, forms within this, um, in, within the kapara, uh, kapa, uh, merkaba. So the two forms is a sitting form and a standing form. The sitting form is basically the same thing, but you, we're going to open up on both forms with um, arm. And how we do it, I'm going to step back. This is the standing form. Alright, so the standing form, I want you to be able to see my feet. So I'm getting back here so you can see my feet. Alright, so in the standing form, we're going to open up. Just like any Tai Chi form or Qigong form, we're going to open up. We're going to use our right foot to open up. So when we open up our hands, everything's going to be relaxed. Remember, shoulders relaxed, drop, all right? Um, chest sunk in, just a touch, not sunk all the way in to where we're slouching over, and not sticking out to where our chest is sticking out like we're real, real proud like that. You know, so you have pride, you know, eyes. Eyes, uh, head high, eyes low, chest out. But that don't mean chest out like that. Just be proud. Alright, so we're here. Hands going to be forming, going to the back, flowing to the back. Fingers are going to be like um, marbles up in between and very relaxed. We're going to feel like they're uh, uncooked eggs under our armpits. Elbows are going to go to the back, hands to the back. Elbows will be rounded. They won't be locked out and they won't be they won't be on two um, round knees. They'll be just rounded enough to where you're comfortable in it. All right, so elbows rounded. Then we sink down from our shoulders. Sink down from our shoulders. Shoulders shouldn't be up. Shoulders drop and relax. Sink down from my, in from our shoulders into our ribs, then into our waist, then into the thighs, then into the knees, into the shins and calf muscles, then into the ankles, the feet and then, then into the toes. So everything sinks it down. Light on the top, heavy on the bottom. So everything sinks to the pelvic floor from the top, and then from the pelvic floor to the uh, roots of our feet, to the base of the feet. And we just open up, hands come up to heart level, breathing in, breathe out. Hands come up to the first mudra. And that will be over the apex of the, of the cranium, right where the pineal gland meets. So the thumb and the, and the index finger, they join as we come in. So basically, you just come step out, toe. Toe is going to drag from, we're going to be at 45 degree angle here, 45 degrees angle with our feet here. The toe is going to drag out, the big toe is going to drag out to where we're Shoulders width apart, hands come up, pivot on our heel of our right foot, come around, and then hands come up over the top of the head, and that's where we join the thumb and the index finger and relax, getting into the, our shoulder width apart with our feet and getting into the posture. So we're shoulder width apart with our feet, we sink down, knees should be directly over the ankles. Not going in like that, not going out. Knees should be over the ankles. The big toe, the side of the feet, and the heel all touching. Those are the three points. So the big toe, side of the feet, and the heels is where most of our weight should be distributed. Majority of the weight should be in the heels. The big toe slightly gripping the earth, and the balance should be within the side of the foot, and the heels should be having, should hold a majority of our weight, a substantial amount of our weight. So shoulder width apart. This is the, 
This is the first beginning of the mudra. The mantra is on, so we go, we breathe in here, and remember also the cockies will go forward. So we're straight here, the cockies is just gonna tuck in, and that will align the spine from the base to the spine, the cords, I mean the um, cervical vertebrae at the top, right under the, the pines. So the head should feel like it's a string attached to it from the top, and the chin slightly tucks under. Not too far like that, not back, but slightly tucks. And this will give a correct alignment of the spine so the energy can go through the central nervous system or the sushumana, the central canal, central channel properly, going up. So we start here. Breathing in from the heart chakra. Everything starts with the heart. And then exhale as we get here and connect and relax. And we breathe in, make the stomach or the abdomen large like a beach ball. So we breathe in, hold for six, and we, the sound is oh, oh. there so it's all the it'll be a higher note on top the color is purple then we go drop an octave when we get to the heart chakra the color is green then we drop another octave when we get to the root chakra the color is red so on the the um, crown chakra purple um, heart chakra green root chakra red the top will be um, the complete verb or the complete uh, sound will resonate um. The heart will be ah, just resonate with sound ah. And then we invert the hands to where they're going down, and the sound will be um, just m, um. So um, ah, um. Open up. Remember, come from the heart chakra, so we come up. Then get back to your posture correctly, stand in the posture. Exhaling as the hands meet. And go slow, forgive me. And then exhale. So in heaven here. Breathe in. 
breathe out as we bring the hands to the sternum, to the solar plexus region. Remember the thumbs. The thumbs will be located in the sternum, that, that uh, little keyhole right here. These are the keys to open up the heart. Elbows, 45 degree angle. You know what I'm saying? Not really a 90 degree angle. 90 degrees would be about right here. So 45 degrees where you're comfortable. Shoulders relaxed. All right, here, we're going to breathe in. And then on the exhalation, we're going to go into the Mr. Pyramid. You can have your hands disconnect. This will allow the energy to surge properly without crossing signals. If you touch, it's fine too, but just sometimes we get into it so deep, if you close your eyes, you might get into it deep to where the fingers cross instead of being enjoined. So, but that's all good, you know what I'm saying? Do what you do and you'll get stronger in the posture. This will also increase strength, external strength. As you can see, you can hold this for a few minutes. Um, you'll start feeling it if you haven't done this before. It builds up um, the um, bioelectromagnetic field as well. It's also going to build up the um, fascia within the muscles and tendons and ligaments. So you're getting a workout. It's going to help detox. It's doing something for every organ. You have the five, the family of the five uh, uh, dantians here on your fingers, your heart, your lungs your spleen, your liver, and your kidneys. All the, the five major organs are located within the meridians of the hands, as well as the pineal, as well as the glands as well. So you're going to be working the whole body by holding your hands here. But don't get too caught up on, that, on thinking about that. Just focus your mind's eye in the center of the mystic pyramid. As you breathe in through the right hand, locate that energy, the chi, ki, Ka, Ra, Kun, I mean Prana, located in the solar plexus for three seconds, then breathe out the left hand. Circulating the energy while focusing, staying focused in the center. See my legs, toes will be parallel, they'll be lined up, they won't be out here like that, they won't be ones that ain't going to be going that way, get them as parallel as possible, get to that bow leg stance where the knees are going to be over the ankles, knees should go over the toes though, you should be standing like this, knees are going to go directly over the ankles, this will strengthen the muscles and the bones. The bones in traditional Chinese medicine as well as ancient medicine, ancient way of thought, the bones hold and store the energy within the marrow. The marrow actualizes the stem cells. The stem cells differentiate into red and white blood cells. As you know, red and white blood cells are basically the immune system. So with the red blood cells, they're like kamikazes. They go in, they free radical scavengers. They, they just go in and they kill off anything, any pathogens that are not necessarily um, healthy for the body. White blood cells, they build other properties within the body to keep it healthy. It helps purge out through the lymphatic system as well. Um, anything that's fluid-based as well through the lymphatic system. So by having strong bones, you will have a strong immunity or and in essence what that will create is less work for the body so these things like forming the Merkel bar this application will be much simpler so when we stand in these postures and qigong you're going to be healing yourself and building your vitality and energy that energy is fuel so if you have excess fuel, fuel, it's not just going to spill out the reservoir of the car like some, you know, like a physical car. It's going to spill out to your life, and that means you have abundance, you have peace, you have you have 
um, pros uh, prosperity, you'll have protection, all those uh, wonderful attributes that we are um, sometimes desiring will be fulfilled because there's no internal work that has to be done as much. It's just keeping up with it, you know, it's a, it's a great work. As they say, Opus Magnus. It's Opus Magnus, this great work, is deliberate cognitive disciplines. So that means standing in this position, although it seems awkward and is somewhat uncomfortable because we're going against gravity and we're like, ah, it's actually becoming one with the gravity and becoming the gravity, as well as becoming the light and enfolding over the light is the darkness, which is you. So all of these things and all of these um, titles and forms of energy are in essence you as the you know, generator, operator, destroyer, as the creation, the creator, and the creative spark, as the gift, the giver, and the one who receives the gift. So we breathe it in, right? Going around in a circle, hold it in the sternum in the solar plexus region right here for three seconds, then we breathe out left. And then after you do that for a few rounds, do it until you feel tired, you know what I'm saying? There's no real set amount of time. I just do it until I feel tired, you know, when my muscles are starting to feel a little achy. And then when you're ready to, to uh, lower your arms, just breathe out, breathe in here, and breathe out to drag your big toe back in, and relax. Sit here for a few moments, breathing in and out, deep abdominal breathing, and then come back out after 30 seconds to a minute of relaxing the muscles, come back out, come back over to the apex, drop your hands back down as you exhale. Now you want to bring the mudra back up, so you breathe in. Mm -hmm. Breathing in, in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dynamic of that flow of that energy from the planet Earth 
like the DNA, the double helix, the spiraling energy. Get that flow going from the base of your feet all the way up and then down. This is the movement of the universe. This is how movement is going. When we see uh, wind blowing, it, it, it may, it, when we feel wind blowing, we may just feel it coming in one direction, but in actuality, it's spiraling towards us. It's two energies intertwining. Centrifugal and a centripetal force. Alright, so we go back and relax and we sit here for a few seconds until you feel ready to move. So basically that's the um that is the Kapata Merkaba standing. Alright, so the Kapata Merkaba standing it, it goes from uh intent. I always remember intent, so those fleeting thoughts, the monkey brain, ward them off, you know. Get them out the way. And get that rhythm still going. And just, you know, just flow with that energy. Allow, because they're going to come, just ward them off. Ward them off, left and right. Just keep smacking them away. And then, you know, focus your mind's eye. This will also help on the center as well as going through the mudra of arm, and then you will have the mandala, which I will place, again, I will place on, uh, I'll send that out to you, but I'll place it on the video in certain spots when I'm talking about it, but that mandala right there will, uh, will increase the, the activity, the inner activity, as well as the brain from being um, um, disorganized and distracted by whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? The more you do it, consistency is very important. Remember that, you know. If we didn't learn how to, you know, if we didn't want to learn how to walk we, or get proficient with it, we would have set a butt down somewhere. And be, But, you know, that's what's going on. There's a lot of sitting down, so, like, people just don't, you know, they can't run no more. They can't do nothing. So, how are they going to learn how to fly? I mean, meditation. You got a lot of people in the in the West think the meditation is 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 strange or whatever, and but they don't even have an understanding about where it derived from and why martial arts or in the East why they do certain things like qigongs and and practice martial arts. Basically, is to keep the body strong enough, like with, what I was just speaking on with the bones strengthening the, the bones as well as the muscles, as well as the um, the nervous system, as well as the um, respiratory system, all the systems of the body basically, and all the organs. Keeping those strong so we can sit in meditation longer. You know what I'm saying? So we learn these forms, you know, the ha ha ha's and all that. It's good self defense, it's cool stuff. Yet, at the end of the day, I mean, who am I fighting? Really? Opposition self. So we get into this meditative posture and we can't sit in meditation long enough to defeat those different um, antagonists that are beating down and trying to defeat our purpose or defeat our natural movement in the life that we are leading through the five senses basically. You know, overeating, angry, you know, uh, uh, lust, you know, um, you know, um, talking too much, um, wanting to always listen to something that is not necessarily uh, positive or beneficial for the mind and the heart. Um, you know, so those five senses of sight, touch, hearing, uh, smelling, and, and tasting tend to get in the way, the five things. They tend to get in the way, but when we go in, into the meditative pro um, properties and postures, we uh, learn to alleviate those issues and then going into forming, that's why emotions is the first um, level of the alchemical expression within Watch the Seven Twilight. So that's the base um, root chakra. And I give thanks for you to you guys, also to Sister um, Kadira, the princess, because she had mentioned something about seven. Um, so she mentioned something about the seven chakras and how we should have. A class for each chakra going into the Watch the Cemetery. The Watch the Cemetery is under the umbrella of the Iklam. Um, Alright, so, all right, so Iklam, the indigenous, I mean, the indigenous cosmic golden ray of Machelzadek. 
is the umbrella that Watch the Semi Twi is under. So this is just one aspect of the icon. The indigenous cosmic golden ray of Machete that um Watch the Semi Twi is basically um applications and forms, you know what I'm saying, forms and applications of different manners to develop the um golden ray of Machete deck. Cosmic Golden Ray of Machete deck. And the picture, you, you've seen the picture, I'm not going to go into it, but the picture, you know, with the Qigong, we're standing there and everything, that golden light, that's the, um, basically, that's the America bar coming forth and emanating forth from the dark space or the dark matter and dark energy, or that black dot, that two-dimensional surface. Not to go into it too much, so, so that's the, that was the standing um, version of the Kapal Merkaba, or the um, forming the Merkaba with intent, mudra, uh, mantra, and mandala. Alright, so mudra, mantra, um, mandala, the circle, triangle, square, then small circle in between in the midst of the um, square. I went over everything pretty thoroughly hopefully. I will speak more on it in the session and this I speak on that in the session. Alright so once again give thanks and we out. Peace. Give thanks. Elohi Etepu El Bay, aka Black Water, the Meta Magician, going over Kapara Merkaba sitting posture inside of the Icon Indigenous Cosmic Golden Ray of Machelzadek. This is Washita Semitwai, one of the uh, aspects of Icon. Alright, so within this posture, the sitting posture, for Kapata Merkaba, or forming the Merkaba with intent, mudra, mandala, and mantra. So how it's very similar to the standing posture. The only difference is we're sitting and we will be um, doing the same thing with our hands located here. The thumbs will be at the, at the, uh, the cleft of the mouth and the line right at the nose. Hands be forming the, the Mr. Pyramid. And we'll be breathing in from the center, keeping our mind's eye located in the center, breathing in, allowing the, the energy to go from the right palm around, be located at the sternum region, hold for three, then breathe out for six out the left palm. Breathing in six here, around, hold for three, and breathe out for, th for six, and then rest for three. And then continue that cycle. Alright, so this is um, always stretch first. So before you get into a meditative posture, even if you're going to sit in the Indian style, or if you're going to sit, or the easy pose, I say Indian style, but you know, the indigenous style, if you're going to sit in easy pose, um, if you're going to sit half lotus, whatever, maybe if you're going to even sit in the chair and do this, stretch first. Um, we're going to go over the meridian stretch, so I will send that out as well. But uh, we'll see um, that by stretching first, you can sit in the posture longer and you'll be more relaxed. So stretch first, and it also will strengthen your legs as well. And, you know, you feel good through the day. This, these, extra, these exercises should be done in the morning. I like doing them when I can say should be. You can do them all day. Whenever you feel like you want to get into the posture and just go into the, the you know, the Kapata Merkaba or even um, going into the Meridian stretch or you just feel like you want to do some Qigongs or some Tai Chi, you, want to, you just, just go ahead and, and get it done. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you know, an intent over force. Don't get caught up on the, the you know, I did send, I, we did go over the Chinese clock and being that it's stated in there that the morning is the best time to um, 
wake up that energy so that you have vitality for the day, which is true. Yeah, if you want to personalize it and do it how you want to do it, true. You know what I'm saying? It's your experience. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to indoctrinate you. We've already been there. We've done it. We've seen it. You know what I'm saying? We, we know what that indoctrination is done. So you find what's comfortable and what's true for you and move with it. You know what I'm saying? It's your, it's your personal experience. So I'm just, you know, I'm not even here right now. I'm just a reflection of you. All right? So stretching to it without splitting, splitting my pants, something like that. <laughs> Alright, so you stretch into it. You can put your knees into your thighs if you like. It depends on how, wherever you are with it. And then just stretch down. Breathe in and just stretch down. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, that's good. Huh? Breathe in, stretch down. Breathe. Breathe down, breathe in. Stretch down and then you can go into the calf muscles. With the elbows, breathe in. Stretch down. Breathe in. Stretch down. Let the exhale. So on every break, on every exhalation, we stretching into it a little deeper. Breathing in. And then stretching down. You put your elbows on the ground, breathe in, and stretch down. Breathe in, and breathe out, just come up slowly. Just straighten the back. Breathe in, breathe in here, and stretch, breathe out, making the legs. Go in close to each other. Breathe in. You really stretch the back, two back muscles, the shoulders, and the hands. Tighten up all the muscles. Stretch and then relax. Breathe in once again. And relax. Bring the feet out. Toes should be angled towards you. We're going to breathe in. Place our hands on the big toe and breathe out. Breathe in and stretch and breathe out, going a little bit into the middle of the feet. Keeping the elbows, I mean the knees, as straight as possible without bending them. Keep them as straight as possible. Breathe in again and go deeper into it, keeping the knees straight. Breathe in once again, breathe out, go deeper into it. One more, breathe in. If you can, touch your head to your knee. Breathe in once again. And on this exhalation, come up and breathe. After you relax, breathe in again and stretch the, the feet. Bring the toes as close as possible, bring the toes towards you with your hands and stretch the shoulders and the shoulder blades as well as uh, the muscles and the armpits, and the arms, all the way down to the torso, the chest. Making the knees flat as possible, making the knees straight. And then breathe out and relax. Bring the feet back in. That dog has been here. <laughs> Debbie. Dog hair all over the feet. Alright, so just bring your feet. Make sure men, excuse me, part yourself. Make sure, again, you know, the testicles are hanging loose. Women as well, you know, don't don't block your energy from uh, by sitting too far off of the edge of the cushion. So it's always good to sit on the edge of the cushion as well because you can lean your knees towards the ground if you're sitting in lotus or half lotus or even the easy pose regardless if you're on a cushion and you want something to, to uh, have, have a, a softer foundation to where you're not just sitting on flat on the floor sit on a higher cushion parts of, and 
it'll be a little easier to stay in the posture a little longer. Let's say if you're, as you put your feet up, just relax. Take a couple of breaths. Remember, thumbs located. Thumbs will be located in the creases of the of the knees. Those are spleen points right here. So it will help with assimilation of information, basically. But that's gene um, essence, basically, within uh, traditional Chinese medicine. The gene is defined as uh, food, water, and air. But that jing is also information or light. Just breathing in, relaxing, remember, straight back, not slunched into it. The back will be straight. So remember, string is attached to the top of the head and pulling up. Chin going in, so as it pulls up on the spine, it's going to pull up from the base and bring the whole spine up. From here, you'll feel the back. you feel when your head goes like this, you will feel your lower back or your, the base of the spine come in line with the top or with the cervical vertebrae, vertebrae, the cervical vertebrae here. So, Alright, so breathing in one more and then breathe out. Do that like three times. Normally here I go into what is entitled the tissue, the divine breath, basically. Um, and how that it we how we go about that and perform this is the Buddhist breath and the Taoist breath. The Buddhist breath is when our stomach our abdomen comes large on the inhalation like a beach ball. The Taoist breath is reverse breathing when our abdomen goes in on the inhalation. So first we inhale, or in heaven, make the stomach large like a beach ball, the abdomen, lower abdomen large like a beach ball, then we breathe out. Six, three, six, three. So the rest of three here. Second part of it, we breathe in and we make the lower abdomen go flat as possible towards the spine. Six seconds, hold for three, and then breathe out for six. Remember to relax the diaphragm and the, the chest on the reverse breathing. So let's go back to the uh, first part of it. Normal breathing, normal deep conscious breathing. So breathe in, abdomen is Come large like a beach ball, lower abdomen, then breathe out after we hold it for three, allowing the stomach to go as flat as possible towards that spine, tongues at the roof of the mouth, behind the teeth always, and breathe out. Hold for three, breath, relax for three. Oh, it's hell. Mm. Yeah, it's about one o'clock, but yeah, it's all good. All right, so breathe in here. And we allow the abdomen to go close to the spine on the in, on the in heavy. We bring down the stern, I mean the uh, diaphragm, and we relax the chest. Because the chest is going to want to rise, the shoulders are going to want to rise a little bit on the inhalation. Because we're going against the dropping aspect, we're going, we're pushing up. So relax the diaphragm and relax the chest. And exhale. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, breathe in. Breathe out, allow the abdomen to go close to the spine. Relax for three. Breathe in. This is reverse breathing. Six seconds, hold for three. And then breathe out. Now on this one, inhale, so we're in heaven, inhale, breathe in, bring our hands up again over the apex of, of the brain, of the, the cranium, 
And then we're going to breathe while we're here. We're going to just go to exhale, relax, and breathe in again. Um, um. Circle the hands up, because that's in the standing qigong. Right, the base of the thumb should fit snugly into the sternum. It's all made there like this for a reason. The reason ain't the purpose, and the purpose not the reason. Because, all right, so we breathe in, and on the exhalation, we form the Mr. Pyramid and relax. Now we do the same as in the standing cheek gun. We breathe in through the right palm while focusing our mind's eye in the center of the Mr. Pyramid, locating the energy at the sternum, then exhale out the left palm. Thumbs will be aligned with the nose. Focusing on the center of the wrist pyramid. Breathing into the right palm. Six seconds. Hold the energy at the sternum, the heart region, the solar plexus for three. To breathe out to the left palm for six. And after you've done that for a few rounds, bring your hands back over. Come to Buddha hands, breathe out, relax the shoulders, then invert the hands. Breathe in and go back and bring the um, the mudra and mantra back up. Um. Red is the color. Um, 
AM is the sound, mm. green is the color as we invert, we bring the hands back up to the natural position, pushing the points going up. direction one two three four five breathe in breathe in you can press in just a touch remember it's in ten over force so you don't want to push it in to where you're forcing it breathe in once again breathe in through the nose tongues at the roof of the mouth behind the teeth Pulling up on the perineum, the small space in between the evacuation canal and the procreation organ. Breathing in and relax that perineum or perineum. And then relax. If your eyes are closed, you can open your eyes. Go ahead and open your eyes on the third breath. And then bring our feet back into this position. Let's stretch out. Come off the chair. I mean, off the. If you're on the chair, you can do the meridian stretch again, or have whatever you feel comfortable. Let's start out and stretch down. Breathing in, relax it, breathe out, stretch it, breathe in, and breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in once again. And breathe in. And 
nice stretch from the neck all the way down. Pulling towards yourself with your hand and your feet. And relax. You can actually lay down on your back if you wish, or just get up and get going for the day. Depends on what you're about to do. If you're going to rest, you know, lay down for a second, get the blood circulate through the body properly. Okay, that was uh, the sitting uh, form of uh, Washita Semitwai Kapara Makaba. I want to give thanks once again, Sifu Chief Sakim Elohi Hetepu El Bay. And now I'm signing off. I'll see you in a couple in, in the last session of Washita Semitwai, the four directions of health defense. Peace, prosperity, protection, and good health.